Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to be converting my K2000 VP into a K2 VX. Okay, the keyboards I mentioned were the last two K2000s that Kurzweil made. By that time, Kurzweil was making the K2500, but I believe it's two models of K2000 that they were still manufacturing as a transition. This is a K2000VP. These were base models that had no upgrades at all in them, whereas the K2VX was fully loaded. I think a lot of people don't like this blue, but I actually bought this board because I thought the blue looked cool cool. However, I found out later that this was a base model and the K2VX was really the one to get. I missed a dead mint K2VX on eBay for $250 buy it now. And while I was checking out, someone bought it. Man, I don't think I've ever been more sick to my stomach than that. So what I started thinking was, I like this blue anyway. The upgrade parts are available, so why not just deck this board out the way I want it? I've already put the upgraded blue display in it and I've up upgraded the RAM, I'll show you that in a minute. Over here I took the factory floppy out and put a SCSI to SD in so I can load sounds off of an SD card. I also installed OS 3.87J, which is the latest K2000 operating system you can get. Excuse the screen, it always acts up with the camera and shows these pulsing lines through it. This screen is actually a beautiful ocean blue, I just can't get it to show up. But the OS 3.87J, it makes your SCSI twice as fast, I believe. It also makes it so you can read two gig partitions. I think the OS that this came with will also read two gig partitions on the SCSI SD card. It's just for some reason 3.87J is faster. Real quick on a SCSI to SD, here's my drives. Here's the stuff on the drives. I have four two gig partitions on this. This is memory to store samples. This is program memory. So this is your actual audio samples you can have for a patch. And this is all of the parameters inside of the patch. So this RAM's maxed out, and this is the Wimpy Factory, the 121K. The K2VX has an expansion for this, which is not in this board yet. The K2000VP only comes with 199 presets. One thing you can do is on the presets higher than this, you can load patches from the SCSI to SD. What differentiates the VP and the VX from the rest of the K2000s is these last K2000s actually had a K2500 sound set, I believe. So this one through 199 you would find on a K2500, I think. <laughs> If you follow my channel, you've seen me open these keyboards up a lot. So I'll try to cut this short. There's a screw in each corner and then there's three screws here. One of the first things you notice is a base model VP doesn't have the fan. I'm putting modern components in this thing, not OEM stuff, which probably generates less heat. I'm just gonna take it kind of easy and not leave this thing on for a long time until I install a fan, if that's what I'm gonna do. This here is my RAM upgraded to 64 megabyte. These white labels are the operating system that I upgraded. I think stock, this is 3.54 J and I upgraded it to the last, 3.87J. As with any K2000, you can put something called a daughter board right here on this plugin. And this daughter board will hold expansion ROMs. And it's usually the contemporary ROM and the orchestral. So on the K2VX, there's two expansion ROMs right here with a daughter board. But let me show you a secret, kids. This board right here, takes the place of the Kurzweil daughter board and the orchestral and contemporary expansions. So for the big K2VX expansion here that takes up all of this room, we're gonna plug this tiny board in. We're gonna wait on this so it's not in the way. The contemporary expansion is sound 800 through 899, I believe. And then the orchestral will be 900 through 999. The K2VX actually has its own bonus sounds and I believe those are 600 through 799. 
I think these yellow labels are called EP ROMs and those hold the configuration of the board. Well, what I have right here is K2VX EP ROMs, my friends. Ooh, oh, 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 oh. By putting those K2VX EP ROMs in here, it will give us the sounds 600 through 799, and then it will put in support for the daughter board and the two expansions. Keep in mind, the K2000 has been out for so long, there's different versions of the board. There's Janus and Calvin. Janus seems to be the one that's easiest to upgrade. There are pins on here called JP7. They're right here, and it has a little jumper cap on it. So there's three pins, and it's jumpering the two that are on the left right now. For this VX upgrade with the expansion ROMs that I'm doing, I need to pull this out and move the jumper over to the right two pins. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Touching transformer, grounding myself out, see this? I'm gonna try to do this with my fingers. Once again, this is JP7. I pulled it out. Now it needs to go to the right. Three metal pins, I'm moving it to the center and the far right pin, pushing the jumper square down. So now that you got the JP7 jumper moved over, go ahead and pull these EP ROMs out now. Here's a chip puller. It's good to ground yourself to get rid of any static shock that could go through the chips. You might want to get a copper bracelet that'll go on and hook to the transformer. Best thing to do is always keep yourself grounded and try not to touch the chips, the conductors on the chips. So these two yellows here are the EP ROMs. There's an upper and lower. It's the same for the operating system, which are the white labels. There's a high and a low side. We'll go ahead and pull this one out first. Mm. These chips have a notch in them that are facing one direction. Right here's the notch. Just pay attention to which direction those are facing. Here is the VX low side. Make sure these pins are perfectly lined up and push down. There's the low side. High side. I'm gonna go ahead and put these factory things here in the foam because I'm gonna hang on to them. Here's the VX high side. Line it up on the pins, ground, ground, push down. Okay, so we have our JP7 moved and we have our EP ROMs installed. The K2VX has a PRAM expansion board right here. Remember the little 121K number for the program memory? Well, the PRAM expansion card that would be covering all this up, I think it expands that to 700 and something K. That's not a lot data-wise by today's standards, but it can store a lot of program information in that amount of space. There's no longer a need for this big, hard-to-find PRAM option because I have... Ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ah. This, my friends, is the PRAM expansion modernized. So the board that used to take this whole area up is now this size. Now let me show you guys something real quick. You're probably like, man, where are you getting all these parts? This site right here, there's a guy named Radislaw. He's in Poland and he makes all of these cards. <laughs> I had to order these from Poland. Let's see if I can get this website to come in focus. You see that website right there? Sampler-expansions.dxp.pl. That page right here has all of these options on it. Expansions for 2500, PRAM option for the 2500. And you can ring any of this stuff up with PayPal. I bought these and didn't have a problem. Radislaw sent them right out. It took maybe a couple of weeks to get here from Poland. Sound ROM expansion for K2000. So this takes the place of a daughter board, contemporary and orchestral. There's the PRAM expansion. Now you can buy both of these, which I did for 225. If you was to find the OEM parts used, people are wanting like 150 per expansion card then there's the daughter board and i don't even see the pram expansion for sale anywhere so yeah it's 175 plus 85 but if you buy both 225 if you go buy some of these from rada's law say hey man hank sent me over here <laughs> so that's where you get them guys i'm not plugging in the expansion roms right now because i don't want them in my way probably going to do that last this pram expansion is going to plug in right here Really no need for brackets or anything because it's so small. It's not even covering up the operating system chips and stuff. Here's what's real scary, guys. The PRAM expansion requires you to solder two wires. This is the plug on Radislaw's board. One of these wires has to go to D1, which is right there. And the other wire has to go to pin 30, which is right there. So on a Janus board, if you see J2 right there, there's the last one, pin 30 is right beside it. The green wire goes here. The white wire goes over here to D1. I can't even get that to show. It's a little diode or a resistor or something. 
And this says, download instruction manual from such and such. I did already. Wire with red stripes is equal to white wire in the manual. See, the manual he has you download is the actual factory K2000. The factory harness will have a white wire and a green wire. This wire has red X's on it, and this one is red stripes. So this should be the white wire, hopefully. White wire goes to D1, that little piece of metal there. And then the red X should be the green wire, which will go here, pin 30. It'll be soldered to it. And I notice there's like a nice little resistor there that you can hit with the iron. <laughs> <laughs> this scares me to death, dude. Solder into these components, man, you need the iron real hot because you can't hold consistent heat on it. So it's like searing a steak, you know? That <laughs> needs to be blistering hot. Hold it on there, boom, hit the solder, get it off before you damage something. Let me see what I can do with this iron I got. <laughs> be, right, be back. Okay, I sort of grounded a tip onto this. It looks pretty blunt in the camera, but it's actually real sharp at the end. Anyways, this thing is plugged in. I'm gonna let it sit there and get real hot for a few minutes, or for a little while, five minutes or something. I sort of made a makeshift wire holder out of a pen cap and eyeglasses case. I wish I had gator clips. Tint the end of this iron. You don't want to breathe this smoke in. <laughs> Shake off excess. Don't want this stuff dropping on that circuit board, dude. I think maybe I should tent that pin before I tried to hook the wire to it. Okay, I put a little tent on it. That worked. Let me tent the end of this wire. It's probably already tented. Shake off excess. All right, dude, this wire is touching pin 30. Can't get the camera to focus. That's soldered to pin 30. On Radislaw's harness, that is the one with the red X's, which should be the green wire factory wise. Now we need to do the white wire. It's got to solder to this side of that D1. If you get this D1 too hot, it'll melt the solder that's in the circuit board. Got to sear that steak, man. On and off, fast. All right, I'm gonna try to tent the solder point where we're gonna put the wire on D1. Just leaving this iron on, dude. Let's tent the wire. You can see the solder splatter when you shake the excess off. You do not want to touch this Toshiba chip that's right beside this. Son of a bitch. D1 is tented. I tended D1 a little bit. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna hold this wire on there, dude. I need something to hold it. Well, it's touching where I need to solder. Will it stay there? Tent the end. I don't know how to solder, guys. Or I don't do this crap all the time, you know? If I worked in a sweatshop in China doing circuit boards, I'd be like Bruce Lee on this iron. Mm. <laughs> be like water, my friend. If water's the cup, become the cup. Okay, I got it. Just run that back behind here. Our PRAM expansion. Let's go ahead and plug it right here. It is plugged in, man. Wow, isn't that better than just a humongous card? I'm going to be looking for a fan kit, guys. It's kind of bothering me now. I was looking. There's something called like a FK1. It's the fan kit for this thing. And I guess it would bolt right there and get power somewhere, but I can't find one for sale anywhere. So for now, you know, I'll just play this thing 20, 30 minutes at a time and shut it off. I mean, really the only added stuff, I mean, I upgraded the RAM and then this tiny ass board here, and then I'm gonna have another little tiny ass expansion. I mean, is it really heating the unit up that much more? You know, <laughs> I might put a little piece of tape right there just to support these wires. Arts and crafts, man. Yeah. 
Now, we're gonna install our big daughter board with the two big ROM expansions. Man, this thing is huge. These are notched, so it goes a particular way. So this is where the daughter board would snap and it is installed. There's the orchestral, contemporary, and daughter board. I'm not gonna do the sampling option. This would be VX spec, except for the sampling option. And I believe everything else should be K2VX specification. Minus sampling option, minus the fan. What's probably a good idea if you do this yourself, you might wanna do one little upgrade at a time, throw the thing on, make sure it fires up, make sure there's no problems, cause then it's easier to narrow it down. Like if I was to fire this thing up and there was some problems, we wouldn't know what was causing it because I just installed, what, three things? But um, I just kinda have faith in my work. But if there's a part failure, it wouldn't be my fault. I just sort of like to do it ass backwards. If there's a problem, I'll just start putting stuff back one at a time until I find out what's doing it. But whenever I'm installing it, I just want the crap installed. I'll give you a close up view of everything. There's the expansion ROMs, PRAM expansion. I don't know what I was calling those, but those are EP ROMs we put in. If you did the sampling option, it would go right here and you would have to cut this out. I don't need sampling option because I just put waves and apes on SD cards and just go right here into the SCSI SD drive. I mean, why record stuff into it when I can just transfer it from the computer? Put a bunch of waves on an SD card, boom, you got them right there. That's something else that would generate heat also where you would want the fan. I mean, honestly, unless more RAM generates more heat, component wise, it's just that added and that. Let me know if this is uh, worthy of getting a fan. And for you other K2000 owners, just know they did not put a fan in the VP. It's not that the fan was just snatched out of this. They just didn't have a fan. All right, now let's check it out. All right, I did a test power on and it was like doing a reset and it went through initiating everything again. But one thing I noticed is whenever it gets to effects, it just kept going like up through the 800, 9, it just kept on going. I don't remember this thing having that many effects in it. So I don't know if it's from the expansions or if the VX has more effects or what, but that's the first thing I noticed. All right, power it back on here. And as you can see, you can already see the 900s from the orchestral ROM. So this is how it goes, guys. Just keeps on going. So this is all the factory VP. Went up to 199. Now we're at 600. We're in the K2VX patches here. In the 600s. Shut the hell up. We're in the 700s. Look at all these sounds, dude. Oh, we're in the 800s. This is the contemporary ROM, guys. Yes. Oh, we're in the 900s. Well, that's the orchestral ROM, my friends. All the way to 999. Let me show you something else. Hit disc. You can see the maxed out sample memory like before, but remember the puny 121K? Now it's 748. This is the PRAM expansion. It brings us up to 748K. So everything was a success. I feel like Alexander, guys, because uh, there's no more K2000 stuff to conquer. I mean, everything's upgraded and maxed out. What else can I do to this thing? A fan sampling option. I mean, other than putting gold and stuff on it, like, you know, trues and bows, maybe put some chrome trim around it or something. <laughs> Let's just say you're playing this Kurzweil one day and you're like, I'm so sad. These measly 600 sounds that are in this thing. Okay. Well, you hit disc, kick it up to your first SCSI ID, which is a two gig partition of this SCSI to SD drive. Press load. Let's just go ahead and start loading stuff. Oh, this is some kind of giga pack here, huh? Oh man, look at all these KRZs. Okay, so here's what I did. Check this out. I loaded every single patch spot from 200 to 599, which 600 is where the VX sounds start. So these are all full. We're in the 200s. I just loaded some silly uh, synth sounds. Okay. These are all bases. So these were all loaded off of the SCSI to SD. Now well, we're in the 300s, 400s.
Anyways, you get the idea. We're in the 500s. Whoop. Kick ass. So this loaded all the way up to 600. Which is a K2VX sound. Now loading all of that, I have 21 megabyte left out of 64. We still have 410 of the PRAM, the program RAM we just put in. Before I did this PRAM upgrade, it would get to a point like say after 150 programs, I would run out of program memory because it just said like 121K or something. Now we have 700 and something K. And I haven't messed with these sounds much. I, you know, we just put it in here. But dude, the K2VX, they have their own sounds, man. Like this is, the, their own bank bunch of bases here i want to be playing stupid stuff on one hand a lot of more drums there's a rap kit check this shit out <laughs> so if you have the vx this is your 600 bank that i'm in oh there is some cool electric guitar stuff too this these sounds, man, are just better than the stock K2000 stuff or the K2500 bank that's in these. Like this dream guitar. It's awesome, dude. All right, we're in the 700s. 700 bank of K2VX. I haven't I haven't played through a lot of these. Neo Bell. Bell of Dreams. Anyways, a lot of bells here. Now when we get up here to 800, this is the K2000 Contemporary ROM. Jungle Jam. <laughs> I had a K2000 a long time ago that had the orchestral and contemporary and I love these sounds dude and I haven't heard them since this has been 15 years ago so I'm starting to remember what that thing sounded like it was pretty cool I liked messing with all of these expansion sounds world jam they're just badass bro I can't even play all of these so many sounds so 800 contemporary ROM bank Looks like there's trumpets, guitar, full rock band. I remember this one, bro. Just so badass. More drum kits. House bass. Now we're in the orchestral. All of these expansion ROMs were on that one tiny little card. percussion i remember there was a rolly snare thing somewhere big drum corp Freaking Batman strings.
right, there you go. That's how you upgrade your K2000 to VX specs. Or just, those are just upgrades you can do if you want to do upgrades. Hopefully this video helped. I just wing it, man. Just take your time. Like when you're soldering and stuff, you need to get the gun real hot. Like I was saying, you don't want to hold mediocre heat onto a component to burn it up. So the trick with this stuff is keep stuff tented and clean and keep the iron real hot. But do that, only hold a few seconds heat at a time, let that stuff cool. If you mess up, just take your time, let it cool back down, put the iron back on it again, try it again. When I was trying to do that D1 or whatever, it took me a few touches of the iron to get it tinted where it'd stick. So just chill out for a few minutes, blow air on it. I was scared to death doing that soldering, man, because it's right over those microchips and everything. One little dot of solder falls on one of them chip contact points and uh, got a problem. <laughs> Yeah, tent that stuff, shake the iron off. Don't need any solder dropping on my chips. This will probably be my last K2000 upgrade. It's kind of sad. I don't have anything else to do to it. I was just playing it for a while. It's not even hot at all. Do I need a fan? Leave a comment. Let me know. I mean, are the fans noisy? Do I really need to have a fan in it? It's not going to be like left on all day. Like it's at Guitar Center or something. It's going to be turned on for maybe... 30 minutes at a time. What the hell was I going to say? Anyways, thanks for checking my Kurzweil video out. This is it for now, guys. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and I will see you next video.